As the Petco Park vaccination site gets ready to reopen, why other sites in the county were able to suddenly open thousands of appointment slots. Family members are mourning two homeless men killed in a crash after police say a teenager took her mother's car. Why they say one of the men chose to live on the streets. A third COVID vaccine could soon get emergency FDA approval in the U.S., but the variants now spreading around the country may complicate the process. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. The vaccination superstation at Petco Park is officially scheduled to reopen tomorrow after a delayed shipment forced a three day closure. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt and I'm Steve Atkinson. Some of the county's other super sites saw a rush of people today after Sharp Healthcare opened 2000 appointments. Our ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty spoke with some patients who quickly jumped at the opportunity. Rosanna was thrilled to get her second COVID-19 vaccination today at the Grossmont Center. How was it? It's perfect. Oh, I'm very happy. You have no idea. How long have you been waiting for this? A long time ago. Sharp Healthcare received a giant shipment of the COVID-19 vaccine, enough for 2,000 slots at county vaccine stations. The Sharp-sponsored super stations are at the Grossmont Center, Chula Vista, and Coronado. They all got fresh batches from the county. They weren't additional vaccines, but an allotment that they were expecting and as of Tuesday morning had in hand. Rosanna says for her, it means finally seeing her family after a year and a half, traveling to Israel and celebrating Easter. And I can see all my grandchildren and my children with no problem. She says she will still wear her mask and follow social distancing, but she's overjoyed to finally get the second dose. Here is very organized, very organized, very fast. The rollout today comes as the vaccine supply has been crippled. A Moderna shipment from the East Coast was delayed, which forced the vaccination site at Petco Park to close Sunday through today. The site will reopen Wednesday, but for many here at the site, it was the second dose. Great. Are you happy you got it? Yes, so happy. Appointments remain available for San Diego County residents 65 and older and healthcare workers. Hours and appointments vary by site, but for many patients, today's supply was a reason to be grateful. I have a bad kidney. I'm happy that I'm getting my second. Summing up what it means in one word. Peace. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. Sharp Healthcare says the vaccines they received in this new batch were from Pfizer. The shipment delay that closed the Petco Park site was from Moderna. Blue Shield is vowing to speed up California's rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine after a sluggish start. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom addressed Blue Shield's $15 million contract with the state. The health insurer says it will build a statewide vaccine network and create an algorithm to determine where those vaccines should go. We are many parts, but one body, 58 counties, 470 plus cities. Cities have issues with counties, counties with states, state across this country with supply constraints, federal issues and the like. And so we're trying to streamline that. We're trying to organize that. Blue Cross says its goal is to give out 3 million shots weekly starting the 1st of March. Under the agreement, Blue Shield says it will not profit from this deal. The San Diego Fire Department says it's administering vaccines for people 65 and older this week. The department says appointments are available through Thursday, and we have a link to make an appointment on 10news.com. Just click on the Resource Center. San Diego County may be on the cusp of moving back into the state's red reopening tier. The county's testing positivity percentage just dropped into the red tier range for the first time in months. The other metrics the state considers are also moving in the right direction. And there were just under 700 new cases reported today, pushing our total past 253,000. The county says five more people have died. And more than 3,000 San Diegans have lost their lives to the virus since the pandemic began. One of the men killed in that horrific crash in Escondido last week was described as a beloved uncle and a friend to anyone who needed one. That's what friends of Sofio Torres told us today. Police say that Torres and another man died after a 13 year old who took her mom's SUV out hit them. Our ABC tennis reporter Rachel Bianco shares what she's learned about Torres and how he's being remembered. You could hear the sirens, the screeching tires, 
the loud boom. A neighbor's camera captured the tragic end of what appears to have started as a joyride by a 13-year-old girl. Tuesday morning, a growing memorial marks the spot where two men died. Police say the men were sleeping in the bushes on Ash Street near Mission Avenue late Friday night when the teenager lost control of the SUV while trying to get away from police. It, all I saw was trash and plowed over bushes and nothing to signify that two people lost their lives here. Kimberly Bloodgood is an Escondido teacher. She doesn't know the men, but thought it was important to pay tribute to them. It's not just a real simple, um, you know, oh, you know, they were homeless. And it doesn't mean there were nothing just because they were homeless. One of those men was Sofio Sotelo Torres. The 51-year-old had the option to stay with relatives, but a family friend told us he chose to live on the street. Ayari Lopez Basan told us in part, he has such a big heart and was so kind to everyone. He was the type of man that even though he didn't have much, he would give his last dollar or piece of food to you so you could be okay. The other man who died was his friend. Police say his name is Mateo Salvador. Police say the 13-year-old girl and her juvenile companion were released to their parents. The minimum age to be tried as an adult in California is 14. No matter what happens in juvenile court, the maximum sentence you can get is to your 25th birthday. And this particular juvenile will probably be unlikely to get that because the basic crime is a reckless behavior, not an intentional behavior. Bloodgood hopes the tragedy serves as a lesson to kids of all ages. And I want, you know, the children to see that you don't always know um, why somebody's homeless, but we need to treat them with respect. They're still human beings. Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. Right now, Chula Vista city leaders are deciding whether to greenlight a program that would provide millions of dollars in rental assistance. The money would come from state and federal funds. Chula Vista has nearly $17 million in funding that eligible residents could use to pay past due and upcoming rent as well as utility bills. We'll let you know the city council's decision once they hold a vote. And there is confusion in Del Mar after crews suddenly installed a rope barrier along the bluffs next to the train tracks today. City Councilwoman Terry Gasterlin sent us these photos saying she had no idea any barrier had been scheduled to go in. San Diego Sheriff's deputies were called and talked to the workers on site who said they were contracted by Sandag. We reached out to Sandag, which told us these ropes are a temporary barrier to keep people from walking through the area that's being revegetated. Neither the city of Del Mar nor the North County Transit District knew anything about this project. Councilwoman Gasterlin says she supports it, but she wants there to be better communication about projects like this in the future. The effort to save some 100 year old pepper trees in Kensington continues tonight. We showed you last week how people parked their cars in front of the trees on Marlboro Avenue to try and keep workers from cutting them down. Well, this week the city put out signs prohibiting parking in the area. In response, some neighbors started standing guard. Now the city says those trees need to be taken down because they are decaying and at risk of falling. Some neighbors say they're not convinced. They haven't provided any data, any measurements, anything to say these trees are, you know, deteriorated to the point of being a liability. Protesters have tried several times to stop the tree's removal, including filing for temporary restraining orders or getting them designated as historic trees. Those efforts fail. We have reached out to the city for an update on its plan to remove the trees. We're still waiting to hear back. And UC San Diego just got about $6 million from NASA to develop electric flying taxis. While several airlines and automakers have invested in the idea of flying ride shares, the idea has never really taken off. Unintended. UCSD will lead several other schools in coming up with the software that will help small aircraft take off and land vertically. They'll also look at how to make the electric vehicles more efficient and quieter than helicopters. The hope is to use this technology in cities with high traffic congestion such as L.A.